Hello and welcome to another update video about Stacks STX. We don't cover this chart too often here on YouTube, but we recently had a really good uh, trade setup that we communicated in our membership to um, especially to gold members who are subscribed to our short term market updates. So obviously in the membership, we also cover charts that we don't cover necessarily on YouTube like Stacks, which is uh, because, you know, the reason is I don't cover it on YouTube. In the past, people weren't interested in the video. So, um, however, those charts can still provide great trading opportunities. Like other charts, we had recently LDO, for example. We had CFX. They are all, they have all moved up. Some are morphing into messy structures eventually, but still, they offer interesting setups that you know, once they've worked out, they you know, the charts sometimes move into other directions or whatever. But anyway, we've had some really interesting ones recently. Um, STX is one of them, which I've covered over recent months. Already in December, I highlighted that. Um, let me just see. I've just got it open here on the second screen. I did highlight. There were two, for example, two scenarios possible. I did show them on the chart at the time. And I highlighted specifically that both are bullish. And the chart was at the time at around $1.42. Now we are at 214 and most recently, just a few weeks ago, I communicated here a support zone that the price used to dip into for a pullback trade and we're now rallying. Now, this is one of the charts where we actually have a so-called 1-2 setup on the chart after actually another 1-2 setup on the chart developed and this could be very bullish. Now, I don't want to create too much hype and everything. Uh, it is also possible that this is simply some kind of an ABC structure. A lot of coins only form ABC structures and never develop five waves to the upside. However, it still is um, an interesting chart and should move higher, especially as long as certain micro support levels are holding. The idea was we have a one, two, then here obviously another one, two setup, even though that wave two was very, very shallow. But still, though, I communicated this support area and the price actually respected it. There are certain things in the microstructure that, um, that uh, yeah, I don't want to say confirm, but they indicated that the pullback might only be shallow. Um, it was shallow in the end, but it was so shallow that I cannot fully trust it yet. So I've got an alternative count here highlighted in white which would allow for another dip into the support area. So let's talk about that. I go to the four hour chart and obviously this would be a one, two setup. I explained that and it could be that we're now in wave one of the next larger degree third wave, which eventually might take us to around about $5 plus. Okay. Um, within this wave one, we should also see five waves. So if I'm adding here, a microstructure it would look like this one two three four five by the way um stacks performed really well in recent days compared also to the other coins out there so yeah and i think we are we're dealing with this here now anybody who for example used an entry point here in the box you know it, it is certainly reasonable i think to start to take some partial profits or even just move up the stop loss yeah. Um, the benefit of a pullback trade is obviously that you can easily move up your stop loss already after the price has just shown a reaction to support and you can take the risk out completely. And the third wave certainly here has reached all expectations, all minimum expectations, you could say. So I'm just watching for a potential fourth wave pullback. Um, if a fourth wave pullback occurs, we should be watching the area here between the 23.6 FIB level and the 50% FIB level. Um, below that level, obviously, below the 50% FIB level, things could start to break down. So main support now for upside continuation is $1.77. That doesn't mean the price has to get there. First of all, to really lock this support area, I need to have the price show me a pullback. As long as we don't have a confirmed pullback after the third wave, um, this could still extend. So I have to use the support area and just move it up with the price. Once we get a pullback, the wave four should not break below the 50% FIB level. And um, 
one more high would be expected, okay, in that yellow count. I'm leaning towards the yellow count, but for risk management purposes, what happens below 177? Well, I would have to assume we're coming down in a C wave. That would, however, mean that we formed an overshooting B wave. And I'm not leaning towards that, even though it's the, let's say, the likely alternative. I should say the second most likely wave count. But I'm not leaning to this because in a wave two, a running flat or expanded flat is not so common. So an expanded flat would be, would involve uh, an overshooting B wave. So they are more common in a wave four, not in a wave two. But that would be a bearish, short term bearish alternative. But the price would need to break below $1.77 to suggest that, which means that in the short term, further upside is um, expected or we are watching for further upside against the $1.77 support level, which means if there is a pullback, I would expect it to land at the moment in the in, in the area between $1.97 and $1.77, uh, no, yeah, $1.97 and $1.77. And from there, um, we should see further upside continuation. I can give you a more precise target for wave five as soon as we have um, a low in place in wave four and an ideal pullback area or level for a fourth wave is typically the 38.2 retracement in this case $1.86. That's my update about stacks. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also, make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.